Welcome to Uncontained, episode 176. I'm your host, Aaron Static Render, and on the show today, I speak to decorated retired U.S. Army veteran of the Iraqi War, Alton Pete. Alton served 26 years in the U.S. Army, and since returning to life as a civilian, he has written the book, Life is so precious. It is a inspirational book with the message that you can achieve whatever you want and working together with everybody brings other people up as well instead of tearing them down. I would like to thank Kelda Music for helping set this interview up. I had a great time talking with Alton and and I look forward to sharing this episode with you. So please plug in those earbuds. This is how Alton Pete lives uncontained. How are you doing today, Alton? I'm doing good, sir, and thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for uh, coming on the show. Uh, I actually got word of you through a past guest of Uncontained, uh, Kelda Music, and uh, she's like, hey, I got a guy that you need to interview, and I was like, all right, definitely send him over my way, and I appreciate you uh, coming on, and uh, we have we have some stuff to talk about today, so... Absolutely. First of all, welcome to the show, and thank you for your service, my friend. Uh, you said you did uh, serve 26 years in the Army? That is correct. 26 years and four months. Oh, wow. Fighting for the freedom and the safety and the security of our country. Well, we we all appreciate that, and uh, thank you for thank you for your sacrifice on that, my friend. And um, I can only imagine I can only imagine twenty six years has a lot of stories to go with it. Oh my God, I have unending stories. I mean, some that make you laugh, make you cry, make you think. I mean, just so many. Uh, unique stories that I can share just forever. Right on. So I, I did mention that you are a decorated uh, veteran. Uh, you mind uh, sharing what uh, some of those accolades are? When you hear of, of anyone serving in the military for that long length of time, you accumulate like different types of awards, promotions, and just different types of accolades to add to your uh, profile. So with me being in the military for that long length of time, I have several, uh, I mean, high prestigious awards and medals and everything just okay. for my, uh, my duty of serving our country. And it's not just myself. Everyone gets the same equal amount of uh, awards, promotions. Everybody gets the same amount of promotions, you said? Yeah, same amount of promotions and awards. It's, it's almost equal. Okay. Because we all do the same type of work. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now you served 26 years. How long have you been out of the service? I've been retired now. I retired uh, 2014, March 1st. So it's been like five years. I just made five years March 1st this year. All right. And I'm still currently transitioning because, you know, that's a, a, a large portion of my life. And to uh, transition from military into civilian, uh, it's, it's a challenge because everything is a little bit different. Yeah, what is a big challenge with, like, what is one of the main challenges that you have to uh, deal to adapt? Because most people, like me, civilians, don't necessarily realize all the changes there are. So please enlighten us. Well, one of the major changes that one has to uh encounter after uh, serving that long at the time is basically just trying to see how everyone on the outside who's never served in the military, how their living conditions are, and then everyone's behavior. And then the main thing is the uh, standards. I mean, I'm so used to standards being so high, everything being dressed right, dressed, and in order, and so when you come back home, you find out that everything is, uh, all the wheels have fallen off. <laughs> a lot of things are not in place. <laughs> you got to try to help it get back in place. Yeah. So maybe just fix, fixing things that are broken all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, was it, let's see, coming back in like 2014, like that was after, after like the stock market crash in like 2000, was it 
eight or ten. What was the main change that you uh, noticed when you came back? Like when, when you said that it seemed like the wheels fell off. What made it seem like the wheels fell off? Well, one big change I noticed being in the Bay Area, it seemed like the homeless crisis has really increased. I mean, certain areas like around Berkeley, El Cerrito, Richmond, Oakland, and even over here in the Concord area, some of these people are living in tents like uh, like it's third world. Yeah. And that's just, that, that blows me away. It really does. It just blows me away. It does. There are little tent villages. Kind of reminds me of what I had to, what I read about in like history class about like Hoovervilles and stuff like that when Hoover was president and uh, right. they had basically building like shanty towns like built out of like. I don't know, cardboard and, like, plywood and stuff like that. And that's what it's like under some of the overpasses here in the Bay Area. You're, you're correct. I mean, it's like it's unbelievable. It's like you can't turn nowhere without running into uh, some homeless folks. And, you know, with like now, nowadays the weather's been kind of warm, like, been like in the 90s, low hundreds. So you see people pushing those carts, and your heart just goes out to them, you know, because I'm a very big advocate for homeless people as well as women. Yeah. And you just want to see, you want to see everybody make it. And that's one of the things that uh, it's hard getting adjusted to because it's just so many. Now, when I used to come home on leave and I would come home to visit my family and friends, it wasn't as much. But now that I'm retired, it's like it's all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I've actually even noticed that since I moved out here to the Bay Area in uh, 2012. So I've been out here for a little while now. And uh, yeah, it seems to yeah, you see it. be running crazy right now. Like, uh, you know, with the, the rate of like the cost of housing out here and everything, it's it's. You know, what what do you is there something that you can think that could be done about this? Well, for one, I think it starts at the top. Uh, it takes a good governor as well as his staff and all the, uh, the um, legislations, legislators, all the senators, you know, everyone who, uh, who are elected into these positions to um, run the city, cities in the uh, state. Yeah. It takes them to come from behind the, uh, the desk, out of the office. And just like they was campaigning to get those people to vote, they need to go back to the same folks and see what can they do to help them. Because if anything, just like when I was active duty in the Army, I'm here to serve you guys. So they should feel the same way because we all take an oath. Yeah. I'm here to serve the people. And if you don't take care of your people, your people are not going to take care of you. And it looks really bad when... um we have all these people that's in the office or having these what I call White House meetings, but they don't do anything about it. They just talk in air and just making a lot of noise. And it takes actions along some love to make a change, a significant change. So if we don't go out and do that to the uh, public, how are we going to gain those people's respect? So it just takes some effort. And it takes some love in your heart to go out there and make a significant change. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. And, and you know, it's gonna it's gonna take it's gonna take some work too to get this taken care of. But um, you know, it's something that needs to be needs to be taken care of, though. Well, I just know I just know from my observation and my assessment, if we don't do anything about it. It's going to be worse and worse and worse. You know, even in San Francisco, which is the biggest city in the Bay Area, they have a huge problem with homeless and less fortunate people. And it's just, it's messing up the area. You know, you go downtown Oakland, like around this time at 8 o'clock in the evening or 9, you can see where homeless people are sleeping near federal buildings. Yeah. So if they're coming at the door, asking for help, why don't we open the door and, and ask them what do we need to help you, to serve you today? I mean, that's, I just don't know how we can, I mean, I can't do it alone, you know, but it does start with the government. Yeah. The governor has, he has to go to those areas 
and he he has to, and, and not just during the day, visit those areas at night. He gets protection. Just visit the areas at night and see who really needs help and, and, and what's going on in our cities. Because to be a governor, that's like the president of the state. You got yeah. just as much power. Definitely, man. Definitely. So, um, I I agree with you a hundred percent that something needs to be done and without the without people like the governor actually knowing and seeing it firsthand, things aren't necessarily they, they aren't gonna know what to do with it. But my question to you was is this is seeing stuff like this, uh, coming home from Iraq and seeing like the homeless problem and everything mm-hmm. kinda what helped inspired you to uh to write your book? Yes, it did. It, it inspired me in a mighty way to write my book, Life is So Precious. Yes, Because sir. when I'm out there taking care of the homeless people, whether it's women, children, and even men, nobody deserves to live this kind of way, especially with the United States being like one of the richest countries in the world. No one deserves to be treated like that. And the reason why I'm so strong and I feel adamant in my heart about looking out for the homeless, less fortunate, uh, women, children, youth, is because while we were in Iraq, man, we went above and beyond for those Iraqis. We spent billions of dollars, just wasted billions and billions of dollars, just to try to provide humanitarian services for these people. Yeah. And they still kept attacking us. They still kept shooting us, even until this day. I mean, it turned out the other day we lost two soldiers in Afghanistan. So, I mean, when does it stop? And we're helping out the enemy, but we can't even help our own people here in America. So that's what stirred up my pot to want to make something happen. And that's when I started just writing those words and writing a book from those powerful little few words, life is so precious. Because if we don't believe in ourselves, if you don't believe you can make it, you're not going to make it. And that's why people give up. All right, all right. They don't believe they can. They don't believe they can hold on anymore, so they give up. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> you know, having a belief in something is powerful to help you get through, even if you know we can't necessarily tangibly touch what you believe in there. But believing in the opportunity or a way out is something that can keep people going themselves. You know, and exactly. I, I want to touch on what you said briefly um, as, while you were talking about spending like billions of dollars helping the Iraqi people um, kind of get a good good quality level of life. I've kind of always felt that, like, you know, even when I was a kid, I always heard those commercials, like, feed the hungry in some other country, you know? I was like, we have homeless people here in America. Why don't we take care of them and then help other people, you know? Or at least help them and other people. And it just never really set right with me, like, taking care of people that aren't here before people who are here. Yeah, I would say to that question, I think it's more political than anything because America, we are the savior for the world. So everybody's always depending on America to bail them out of the, uh, whether it's the smallest situations or even the largest situations. And we just, uh, we're the savior of the world. But what I don't like is how we always neglect our own people. We neglect our own cities and states that are nearly in poverty like these third world countries. And I could never put a finger on it as well. I mean, when we do go to war, I mean, I'm going to do my best, be safe, and and bring our folks back home safely. That is the mission. But it just, your heart just got to yearn for something more for our own country. And that's why I feel the way I feel, man. I mean, charity begins at home first. Then it spreads abroad. We got it kind of backwards. Yeah, you know, we helping out. We helping out folks overseas, <laughs> and here we got people in our own backyard crying for help at the same time. You know? Yeah, like you're sending food over there, and they're digging through the trash here. You know, it just doesn't doesn't make sense to me at all. So, I what can like in your book, 
uh, life is so precious. What is it that like somebody who is coming to this book can expect to expect to read? Like, what what is some of the content of the book? What you're gonna expect to read and to gain from reading "Life Is So Precious" is you're gonna gain a ray of hope, and you're gonna gain a ray of confidence and courage, and your self-esteem is gonna rise. Your, your faith, you're going to begin to believe in yourself again. Because I share a collection of short stories from my experience, because that's the only way I can be impactful and relatable. Okay. It's through, it's through my experience, because I want to captivate that reader who is reading my work to know that if Alton can make it, so can I. And it's like it's electrifying. You know, it it attaches and it catches on and it just keeps going. So what I want to do is I want to reach you and let you know that you're worth fighting for and that you don't have to give up and that you can persevere. You know, I lost my mom. Sorry to hear that. I shared this in my book. And I lost my sister, my only sister. I'm the oldest of four. I still say four even though my sister is no longer here. Yeah. But that drives me and that, that motivates me. And that's letting me go as well as everyone else. I didn't quit. I didn't throw in the towel and I didn't give up. And that's rough when you lose your mom, your yeah. sister, some very uh, important people in your life. You need them. But what keeps me going is my mom and my sister believed in me. And uh, my mom taught me well. You know, my mother was young when she died. She was only 48. Oh, wow. And it's been it's been 23 years now. And I'm going to tell you, man, I have my struggles. I mean, I have to fight like everybody else just to make it and not to give up. But I'm, I'm persuaded that I'm not going to give up. And I'm not going to give in. And I let everyone know in my book that out of every bad situation, your good has got to come out of it. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's good inside of everybody. I don't care how worse and how uh, tough and how ugly it has become in their life. There's good inside of everyone. And sometimes something has to happen to bring the good out of you. Otherwise, the good will stay hidden. So something got to happen. Sometimes it's tragedy, like in my, you know, in, in my direction of life, on my journey, losing my mom and my sister. Sometimes it's tragedy got to bring the good out. Do you think... I didn't know I was going right. I'll go ahead. No, I, I was just going to ask, do you think uh, the unfortunate uh, passing of your mom and your sister helped bring some good out of you? And, like, what good did that unlock oh, absolutely. in you? absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't have known that I was going to be a writer. I didn't know that. I mean, everybody has a gift, though. Let me put that out there. Everybody has a gift and a talent of some sort. And whatever it is, it's your passion that's going to drive you into your purpose. Okay. Everybody has a gift and a talent. My gift and talent is writing as well as singing as well as my brand, Life is So Precious, I've uh, created. I mean, everybody has something good inside of them. But I'm going to tell you, the reason why it happens the way it does in life like this is because if every day the sun shined, man, we wouldn't have any crops. We wouldn't even have any fruits and vegetables. So the rain has to come in order to allow those items to grow up out of the ground. People don't like when it's too hot. People don't like when it rains too much. But we need <laughs> both to balance out the earth. And Definitely. That's how life is. Definitely. You, you see, when, when, when the rain falls, the crops begin to grow. Some some fruits are too big to hang up in the trees until they got to grow up off the ground like watermelons. Watermelons are too heavy to be hanging on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Very true, my so they, friend. So, yeah, so they got to grow up off the ground. If they did grow on trees, you would not want to walk under that tree at any time. That'd be like you would not. that'd be like playing Russian roulette with fallen watermelons. 
<laughs> I'm like, I'm staying away from the watermelon tree, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> tree. <laughs> oh, that's man. how it is in life, man. I agree. And if, it, and if it's sunny all the time, the too, like you were saying, if it's sunny all the time, like you were saying, you it that would just be like your every day like you know when it's cold out some days or cloudy you appreciate those sunny days more you know otherwise it's just like oh it's another day you know (laughs) absolutely man because i'm gonna tell you i'm grateful and thankful for what i'm where i'm at in my life today but i have like i said my struggles but i do miss my mom and my sister but that's what drives me it keeps me focused and um you know when the time comes for me to get married, because one day I want to get married, but I got to find that special woman to be able to get married too. Definitely. And I'm going to tell you, man, she's going to get, she's going to get all of me just like I want all of her. And I'm going to treat her like a queen. Okay. And that's why I'm very, very strong about our women because man, without the women, it would be no men because we need our women. That is true. So, yeah. Those types of scenarios, scenarios are in my book. And I just want everyone to know that uh, you're worth fighting for. And don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. You can get tired. We all going to get tired. <laughs> you just take a seat. You just take a seat and rest your feet. But you got to get back up. Because I'm going to tell you, there's more waiting on us ahead than it is what we leave it behind. And sometimes you got to let go of the past in order to reach what's ahead. Because what's ahead is promising. What's in the past is our history. Okay. And that gets us where we are. So there's more waiting on us ahead than what we're leaving behind. I like that, Alton. I like that. So now for writing, like you the, you mentioned to me earlier as we were talking before the show that this is your first book that you wrote. Um, is this is, – is writing and becoming an author something you've wanted to do for a long time or is it a relatively – new uh realization that uh you're like i have this talent to write so i'm going to do it well i'm gonna tell you like everything prepares us for what's getting ready to come and what is to come and the military prepared me for this man can you imagine how many briefings i had to do how many write-ups i had to do counseling how much i had to write on reports i mean all this prepared me for where i am today so it made it a little bit more feasible but writing now that I have the uh, liberty to do so, it's enjoyable. I mean, when I was doing it then, it was like I had to do it. <laughs> yeah, you know? and I can imagine in, in writing military. a briefing opposed to writing a book of short stories has a little bit different feel to it. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it has a, a huge uh, different feeling. So, But I enjoy doing this. And plus, when I was writing my book, Like in two chapters of my book, 15 and 16, man, I was thinking movie. So I'm looking to get a movie out of my book. Okay. I'm looking to get a movie out of my book because life is so precious. That's going to blow this world away. And I'm going to tell you, in this day and time, we need a movie that people can watch over and go see two or three or four times at the theater. We need a movie to grab them and let them know that your life is so precious. We need something that's going to captivate, that's going to marinate and serenade your mind and your heart and soul to let you know how important you are. We need that more today than ever. And that's why I'm looking to get a movie out my book called Life is So Precious. So I got two chapters in my book that's perfect for the big screen right now. Great, great, man. I like how you're keeping everything stre- streamlined. Uh, you know, the book is Life is So Precious. The movie will be titled Life is So Precious. And you slip yeah. this in there. You slip this in there a little bit, but I want to make sure it's spotted. You have a, a clothing brand that is called Life is So Precious as well. So I just want to make sure that people actually heard that you have uh, a clothing line out there now. Or you're working on one, yes. correct? Yes, we're working on it right now. As a matter of fact, I got all kind of items. I'm going to see if I can try to partner in with uh, Apple, Starbucks, Walmart, Target, all these uh, airports, trying to get those products out there with gift cards called Life is So Precious. Like when you walk up to Starbucks and you got all those gift cards in your face, 
well, I want to put some of my good cards, gift cards in the front where it says, life is so precious because it gravitates that person. Yeah. And it lets them know that that's, those are powerful words. I need to get that. And you can even hold on to it as a souvenir. And that's what, that's what my mission is and my vision. So Definitely. I want it all. So, so what do you want people to like, and huh, let's see when, when somebody reads your book, like what, uh, like what ride do you expect them to be taken on? Like a ride of emotion would be like a roller coaster up and down. Is it all like uh, heartfelt? I apologize that I haven't had a chance to check it out because Kelda just got a hold of me like last week, so I haven't had a chance to check out your book. So uh, I want to know, like, is it a roller coaster ride? Is it a like all inspiration all the time, or what? What? What can what can the uh, reader expect? The reader can expect some inspirational, uplifting, encouraging, motivational, um, something that's just going to make you think, a lot of uh, common sense things that's making sense, especially if you're trying to make a dollar out of 50 cents. <laughs> I mean, I'm working on everything, man. I'm working on every part. I mean, even how to treat a woman. I talk about that for the fellas, you know, how – important we need to treat our women i talk about that so it's a lot of common sense idol i talk about love because i'm man enough to talk about love because it seems like men are too bashful too prideful to talk about love it's okay to <laughs> love people it is it's okay it to is. love people it don't make you no less of a man or a woman you know I'll you just got to be cool and deny it right <laughs> Well, well, you could be cool and still stick your chest out and say I'm man enough to do it. That's Dang. all. I, I know. I, mean, I was just man. throwing that out there, man. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> nah. But, yeah, you know, we, we we got feelings. I mean, and it's nothing wrong with sharing your feelings. I mean, when I was in battle in, our, in Iraq, man, I had to show love to everybody, even the Iraqi people. You know, I had to show love to them guys. Was that hard? There was a lot of them. Like, um, with having to show love to somebody hard. who's, like, trying to, where where you don't know which ones are trying to blow you up. Well, I mean, I had some locals that we call them that work with me every day, like seven days a week. Okay. And uh, it, it, it wasn't hard showing love because I'm a people person. And I don't, I don't discriminate against love. You know, I know we was in their country. You know, but don't 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 get mistaken or twisted. Now I was keeping my eye on them like they were keeping their eye on me. But <laughs> I'ma still show you I'ma still show you some love because at the end of it, love wins. Yes. Love will win all the time. And that's all those people are looking for as well. They just looking for love. Yeah. Don't you know love is strong enough to where it'll heal you like medication? That's how strong love is. You can heal, like, medication just by love. So they need love like everybody else. They're human beings. I mean, they may not be from America, but, you know, I show love towards them. And I'm yeah. going to tell you today, I can feel good knowing that I show love towards the Iraqis. I mean, I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah, that's good, man. I'm glad, you know, you, that's all you can really ask for is be happy with who you are and what you did after an experience. You know, you don't want to exactly. look back and be like, oh, man, I did something shady there and I regret that. But, you know, I know. If, uh, what could I done better? I mean, what could I done yeah. different? I mean, when you got the chance to do it, do it. Yeah. You, you know what you're doing before you're doing it. So do it. Make sure you just do the right thing. Definitely. And, and you'll always have the the oh, what could I have done better thing? But at least, you know, you did the right thing, you know, <laughs> like no matter right. what you do. Um, but this. That's, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say that you're, you're absolutely correct. You know, just just doing the right thing. <sighs> yeah, yeah, definitely, man. So this book, it sounds it sounds great. It sounds like there's something in it for everybody, you know, something. Oh, my that... God, everybody lolly dolly. <laughs> everybody yeah, lolly dolly, everybody. I like that. Everybody lolly dolly, man. It's something in there for everybody. All Even right. our youth. You know, I got a piece I wrote about our, for our youth because the youth seem like uh, they're not heard or overlooked. 
So I wrote a piece for the youth in my book. So I, I, I took care of it, even those that are in prison. You know, I thought about them as well. So I, I, I got everybody in there. All right. Everybody all right. be loved. We'll definitely have to check that out here. And before I get to my final questions, there was one more thing that uh, you mentioned that you wanted to kind of talk about. Um, wanted to talk about when we were doing talking before the show started, and that was about uh, resources and benefits that are available to veterans and their families that they can seek uh, regarding like mental and physical health. Uh, do you want to talk yeah. about those for a couple minutes? Let people know what's out there if they need help. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for the ones who have been to war and uh, preparing to go to war and come back, return it back home from war, as well as the families that are left behind, taking care of the families and making sure the household is in uh, complete peace. There are programs at the VA facilities and clinics who are allowing not only just the service members, but the families to seek medical, uh, any type of medical concerns, any type of dental, um, any type of... Uh, just any kind of concern you may have with your mind, your heart, you're not feeling right, you need some medication, whatever well, programs at the VA facilities and clinics who will address those concerns. They have doctors, nurses, uh, mental and physical therapists, they even have a chaplain. He'll listen to you. Anybody you want to talk to, anybody you need to go and see, you can get it at the uh, – VA facilities and all the clinics, your okay. local uh, facilities. Is there a website they could go to to uh, figure out where uh, to get this information or figure out where their VA clinic is or anything like that? Yeah, you can go, uh, you can Google VA.gov and that'll give you all the information that you need that are provided and through the resources and it'll just lead you in the right direction. All right, perfect, perfect. So that's out there for people who need it uh, that were uh, who have served uh, in wars and their families. So definitely check and the families. Yes, and the families that that is important as well. And uh, glad it's out there, man. And thank you for sharing that with the audience. Now I'm. I have this section of my show, the second half of my show, which is dedicated to helping people who want to get involved in the entertainment industry. And the first question I have for you is, Alton, like, what advice do you have for people who are looking to maybe write that first book or start up that first uh, clothing line? I would say to uh, every individual who desires to go in that uh, direction of their life is to do your homework, do a whole bunch of reading, searching, asking questions, go to the certain areas where you can just pick up on what it is that you really want out of this. Is it your passion? Is it just for the money? Or do you just love to, uh, you know, be a servant to the people? And then just take it from there. Just do your homework. And then once you find out if this is really what you want to do, I would say go for it. Because opportunity knocks at the door once and after that is chances. And if this is your golden opportunity, you need to go full force and make it happen. Because what's going to happen is years can pass by. And if you never got to where you wanted to go in your life, it's going to tear you up. It's going to follow you around like a shadow to remind you you messed up, you missed out, and you don't want that kind of regret. So if it's kind of bugging in your ear right now, you need to go ahead and make it happen and just do it. I like that, and I really like the line that you had in there. Opportunity knocks at your door once. The rest is just chances. Um, chances, yes, sir. I, I, I like that. I was like, I, I haven't heard that before. So it was uh, kind of a new quote, and uh, I will have to uh, – I'll ha maybe have to use that sometime. Of course, I'll give you credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> – so all See, right we, we help we help us one another man <laughs> yeah man exactly that's that's the way i think it not even just 
the creative community and like the entertainment community is but you know that's that's the way it should be you know like one person goes up it can be same in entertainment or same as in regular life one person goes up bring other people with you and eventually you're all up you know yeah man you feel better because i'm telling you man being retired Man, I'm tired of uh, people calling me for money. I'm, I'm trying to see everybody make it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get I get them calls, man, during the day, in the morning, at night, about needing money. I can't even answer my phone anymore now. <laughs> and that's because people people are not following their dreams. Man, your dreams will make you rich. It's making me get there. You know, because I have dreams, goals, and I got ambitions. But your dreams will get you, they will get you where you want to go. You know, you got to do it. You know, every every individual is responsible for their own dream. Definitely, man. Like you said, chase that dream because opportunity knocks at the door once. The rest is chances. And you don't want to be kicking yourself in the ass because you missed the knock at the door. Yeah, because I... uh... I'm hearing those and people are doing that, man. It's like they get in their 40s and 50s and 60s and realize, man, all that time is gone and it's not coming back. You know, that's why you got to get on it now. And that's yeah. why with me being retired, you know, I'm getting on it now. I'm only 52. I don't look it and I don't even feel 52. And I feel like I still have a lot more to give because I did serve our country. So that kind of gives me a, a an advantage over a whole bunch of people. Yeah, because I have the resources, you know, and, I, and I'm humble. You know, I will tell you, I'm very humble about it, and that's why I'm taking advantage of this whole golden opportunity, man. If I can do it, so can you. Yes, yes, and uh, this right here then rolls perfectly into the next question. Since you are chasing after it, you put the book out. You you are going after your opportunity. What are you now doing to promote yourself and your book, your clothing line, and and future movie? Uh, what I'm doing now is, uh, matter of fact, we're getting ready to shoot a video. Um, August in the middle of August and we're going to shoot my brand. We actually going to just promote it out there. We're going to push it out there because, uh, without a vision, you're going to perish. Yeah. So this is part of my vision. You know, I can envision this and this is part of my vision is to touch this world with just a few powerful words. And that is life is so precious. So we're going to shoot video going to do the photo shoot we're going to just keep pushing it and pushing it as far as we can go because i'm going to tell you man there is no limit there is no limit in whatever we want in this life and everything we want in this life is attainable so you can get it so that's what we're going to be doing pushing the video uh sending it to all these media outlets and all these major corporations and companies and we're just going to keep pushing it out there and that's how I'm going to get this movie made with these big name people like Dr. Phil, Bishop T.D. Jakes, Denzel Washington, Morris Chestnut, Holly Berry, Angela Bassett, David Mann, Magic Johnson. I want all of them. You already have it all casted and everything, man. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I want everybody to be a part of this because in order to get big, you got to think big. Definitely. Like I said in my, in my book. Don't get mad at me if I'm getting big things because I'm dreaming big and you dream a small thing. You need to start dreaming big in order to get big because there's an opportunity for everybody to shine. I'm not the only one. Everybody can get their shine on. Everybody has their own time and their own season. So that's why I encourage everybody, man, just go for it and just support, make it happen. And I'm going to tell you, you'd be surprised what we all can do collectively as a group and what we can do if we start, you know, trying to put each other down. Yeah, you know, We're definitely. not going to get far at all doing that. I I agree with that completely, Elton. Um, and I I really dig your positivity, man. You have you have a lot of it, and uh, I I appreciate hearing that, especially with like all the craziness that's been going on today. Positivity well, is good, a man, nice that's change. What I want to do. I want to touch everybody, even you and all the listeners out there. I want to touch all you guys and tell you that I love you. 
And I'm not less of a man to say I do. I love all you guys, man. That's why I wrote my book. That's why I went to war. I went to war to save lives. Now I'm back in war to touch lives in a very different way. And that's my mission. And that's my vision. I want to touch your life in a very different way. And that's what I'm doing. Nice, man. Nice. And now, with with that vision... Like, what do you want people who uh, read your book to remember about the experience of reading your book? Or uh, what feeling do you want them to take away? I want them to take away the uh, a new way of thinking. You know, thinking positively and thinking hope and thinking that no matter what's going on during the day, I'm going to get by this and get through this instead of thinking the other way because it's hard. I'm going to give up because I'm going to tell you when you give up and you don't believe in you, ain't nobody going to believe in you. But when you hold on and you don't give up, you get to see everybody who's going to be celebrating with you. So you got to take your pick. You can't be looking back. You can't be looking backwards. But you got to look forward. And I want everybody to take on that ray of hope. You know, to all the ones who are hopeless, there's still hope. You know, there's still hope for you. You can make it. Just mark my word, you can make it. If you don't give up. That's key. You can't give up. That is, man. That is like I've seen like the memes online or whatever, where it shows a guy like digging in a mine, like a with a pick, and just like giving up and turning away. Where if you would have hit one more time, has that that cave filled, that treasure trove filled with jewels, and he just quit too soon. And I was like, he never did anything, you know. Exactly, exactly is the point. That's my point. Yes, man. So, um. Now, what would be a highlight or two that you've experienced while writing and promoting your new book, or your first book? Um, I will say one good highlight in my book was just given um, everything that I wrote and even the movie that's in the book, 15 to 16 chapters, um, it was my way of giving back to a world who needs to know that somebody cares. And that was, that's, I mean, that's one that sits with me until this day. And even this evening is to know I gave away something from my heart because I care. And I know you're going to feel it once you begin to read it. Cause I've had so many people, man, that bought my book and be crying and saying how much they moved them and touched them. But that's what I wanted it to do. You know, it just puts you in a different path and lets you know that it's not over. It may feel like it. It may even look like it, but it ain't over. You just got to keep on pressing. You got to keep on pursuing and you got to keep on wishing. Because when you do those things, everything you've been pursuing for, wishing for, pressing for, you don't get it. <laughs> you go get it. Yes. Because God is not going to withhold anything good from us. So you're going to get it. And that's what I want everybody to take away from my book. If you keep on pressing, there's a prize waiting on you when you get to the finish line. you got to get to your finish line. You've got to get there. And that is a great message right there. So uh, I'm definitely going to have to check out this. Definitely sounds like it's full of inspiration. I have one final question for you left, uh, Elton. But before I get to that question, where can people find you online? If they want to get a hold of you to find out where they can get the book or um, check in on your uh, clothing brand or where where can they get a hold of you on like social media? Yes, you can reach me at uh Alton Eugene Pete dot com. Pete P E T E dot com. All right, and that's where everything's at? Yep, you can also reach me on my Facebook page, Alton Pete. You'll see me there. 
and all the information you need to know on how to order the book, which is on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, any bookstore, you'll find it there, and you'll be able to purchase it. All right, perfect, man. So um, I will go ahead and put that information in the show notes so people can uh, can get a hold of you there. I really want to thank you for joining me today on Uncontained, and thank you to Kelda for helping set this up. I've had a great time talking to you, and um, I got that one final question for you, Alton. Alton Pete, how do you live uncontained? main reason why and how I live uncontained is that uh, I just believe in myself, I believe in Alton, and... I'm going to use the uh, scenarios from my mom and my sister. They believe in me as well, so I can still feel their presence. And I can feel that uh, very strongly in my heart. And I just, it drives me and it motivates me. And uh, I don't really care about what people think or say about Alton or even entirely the Pete family because <laughs> nobody can get us where we need to go except God. And. Sometimes you got to learn how to shake the dust off your feet and you got to learn how to shake the dust off your hands as well as your shoulders and keep it pushing and keep it moving because you're going to have all kinds of folks who won't believe in you just as long as you don't stop believing in yourself. So that's how I stay uncontained. Nice, nice. And that that's key right there. Keep believing in yourself whether or not other people believe in you or not. That's huge right there. And major. I have one final thing for you to do uh before I let you out of here, Elton. As I said, I appreciate you uh coming on the show and uh talking with my audience here. I have that one final thing to do, and that is sign off the show. Will you do me the honor of signing off the show tonight? To all the listeners out there, this is Alton Pete once again. I just want to remind every one of these very few powerful words, life is so precious. And it's just some few words just to elevate one, to captivate one, and to celebrate one, to never give up, but to hold on instead. And this is my final words. I am Alton Pete, and I live uncontained. And that does it for another episode of Uncontained. Thank you for listening, and thank you to Alton Pete for joining me and talking about his upcoming book and all the plans he has set up for where he is going to take that book. So please check him out on his social media. I will have that in his show notes so you can follow up and uh, actually purchase that book as well. Life is so precious. That is the name of the book. This is Uncontained. If you enjoyed the episode, please share it with a friend and uh, tell somebody who hasn't heard about Uncontained about the show. I'd appreciate it a lot. And if you're not following Uncontained on social media yet, please do at Uncontained Pod at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, live Uncontained.